Previously on Super Idols RPG, the members of Rhythmix decided they were going to accept an offer to attend a Super Idol weekend training camp called Camp Grand Star. Vivi got the okay to go from Mary Rain, among other things. Angie told her crime mom about all the crimes they did. Jaden learned about Aunt Jan's past as a musician. Lucia bonded with her brother Mateo. And after a fight with Kenzie, Alan resolved to confront Karen about the secret she's been keeping from the rest of the group. But nothing the kids have done can prepare them for what they're in for as they head out to the first day of camp on today's episode of Super Idols RPG. there everyone and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM Aaron Cerise and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hey. Drac. Hi. Luca. Hello. And Liv. Hey. Uh. Oh my goodness. How is everyone today? <laughs> excited. Woo. Ready. Hi. I'm good. Camp episode. The cherry blossoms are flying everywhere outside of my window, so it's beautiful. It feels right. <laughs> feels like it's a good time for a summer camp episode. Or yeah. <laughs> fall camp episode. Camp episode. The camp <laughs> yes. episode. It's a September <laughs> camp episode. It's a good day for an episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Takes place in September, recorded in April. It's very summer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's there's, that's the uh, average between the two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll even out. Okay, anyway, so, right before this, we, we did a bunch of end of session stuff. Uh, you can listen to that in the Patreon bonus content if you have access to that. Um, but definitely, as a result of the solo sessions and uh, end of session, we have a couple of advancements we need to cover before we launch into today's session. Oh. So first off, uh, Queen B uh, actually advanced in her solo session um, and is taking a new move, from what I understand. Can you tell us about that, Luca? Oh, yes. It's uh, a genus move and it's a uh, game phase. When I commit myself to save somebody or to take down an enemy, a powerful enemy, I can mark one condition to take plus one ongoing on every action in the pursuit of that goal. But... If at the end of every scene, if uh, I haven't made uh, any progress uh, towards that goal, I have to mark another condition. I love this very much, especially since, like, just the end of that session was very much you getting your game face on. And we also have another advancement from Lucia. Liv, tell us about that. Yeah, um, so Lucia is taking the move Troublemaker. When you help a teammate through destructive, criminal, or rule-breaking actions, you can give them a plus two instead of a plus one when you spend a team from the pool. I don't think that this move is going to be particularly useful to me. I can't think of a single situation where mm. I would find this applicable. <laughs> Lucia is just like such an upstanding citizen. Like, I don't see... Yeah. I don't see she's, honor roll, she's hope She's never club. broken the law or done anything destructive in her life, and mm. I love her for that. <laughs> neither has my good friend Vivi neither has uh, Valerie Pierce ever <laughs> so with all that said I think we are we are good to move forward with our little story here which we have we have just oh you know a little, a little thing coming up nothing too nothing too special just a very exclusive and prestigious uh, training camp that we've all been looking forward to for quite some time <laughs> Very exciting. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Camp episode. Camp episode. Camp yeah. episode. <laughs> camp, 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 camp. <laughs> Well-oiled machine. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, my God. We're going to burn this camp to the ground. <laughs> We're going to die. We can't die in this game, but we're going to. It's okay. It probably wasn't the first time that it would have been burned to the ground, so we'll be fine. It's a it's a super idle camp after all. That's how they got all of these safety protocols. 
I yeah. hope this camp yeah, burns to the true. ground, but it's not Jaden's fault. You know, the person who can control <laughs> <Yeah>. fire. <laughs> I was, was going to say, that was a very specific yeah. pull. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It won't burn to the ground. I'll just flood the place. It's fine. Sir! <laughs> what can go wrong? We just got to experiment with different kinds of property damage, really. Exactly. My Wizard of Oz, it might just whip up the whole, the whole camp <laughs> off the ground. Wizard of Oz, it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting all of this out of the way so that none of this will actually happen. <laughs> yes, that's how it works. Aaron's looking at her notes like, damn it. hundred, hundred percent. That's, that's okay. it. <laughs> so, um, logistics wise, uh, you finished off your solo sessions late Thursday, early Friday mornings, depending on what your sessions ended up being. So we're not going to play out the Friday because um, it's basically just another school day. And you don't end up having another club meeting that day either, because according to the brochure that you've all received for Camp Grand Star, you all know that you have a bright and early morning ahead of you on Saturday. And I, I do mean early because the buses taking you out to the campgrounds are leaving from the Cadence Downtown Terminal at 530 in the morning. Ugh. Oh god. Ugh. Gross. Just that, that authentic camp experience. <laughs> and before we get to that bus trip, uh, I'm curious. Aside from stuff like phones and tablets and any standard camping gear that you're bringing along with you, is there anything of interest that anyone wants to declare that they are bringing with them on this trip? Stationary. <laughs> oh, of course. That's barely even neat saying. <laughs> I'm bringing my the guitar my aunt gave me. Oh, nice. I'm bringing a bunch of snack contraband. I know how camps work, okay? <laughs> They're not going to have any good snacks. They're not going to have any good stuff. So I'm take I'm bringing Oreos. I'm bringing Twinkies. I'm bringing like bags of like nasty, spicy, caramely, whatever you want. If it's a type of popcorn, I got it. Lucia is coming stacked because that's how you get what you want in situations like this. You bribe people. <laughs> <laughs> Just all the important stuff. Is she bringing anything she actually needs? Probably not, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully the rest of that. the group will have her covered. <laughs> oh. I'll um, as a little camping experience, so they're bringing uh, sunscreen, uh, some hand warmers, uh, a Swiss knife, and some good string. Yeah, that's right. Enviro Club experience. So, like, all the actually useful stuff. See, this is why Lucia doesn't need to pack anything. Bee's got it covered. <laughs> Uh, I, I think Valerie is just bringing like sunscreen, bug spray, basic, basic outdoor stuff, sunglasses. Oh um, my god, are they like the the big like celebrity sunglasses? Yes, absolutely. Oh. I think those that, those would look extremely good with your outfit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm definitely mm -hmm. bringing like a pair of aviators. Very good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> anyway, so as you all understand it. The basic outline for the next few days is going to go something like this. You are going to bus about an hour and a half outside of Cadence up to around, it's a mountainy lake area. Uh, this is actually a real area of BC. Um, it's called Daisy Lake and a nearby mountain called the Black Tusk. That's a real name? Oh. There aren't actually campgrounds around there. Uh, well, not not like lodges or anything. Um, but in our universe, there we're going to say there is a lodge up there that Camp Grand Star maintains, um, fittingly named the Grand Star Lodge. And there's also plenty of forest surrounding that area, so you gather that trekking through the woods is going to be at least some part of this experience. And you don't know much about exactly what the camp activities are going to be. Uh, they are just, in the brochure, described as literally camp activities, um, but whatever they are, they're supposed to help you improve and finesse your powers. And that part of the camping experience is going to take up most of Saturday and Sunday. Uh, you will have, on Saturday night, you'll have one night of camping outdoors. Yay. And you'll have one night on Sunday night sleeping at the lodge. So you won't have more than one night sleeping on the ground, at least. Sweet. And then when you head back to Cadence on Monday, you have an excused day off of school for a free pancake breakfast and some fun at Cadence's very own Splash World Water Park. 
<laughs> so it's going to be a very full Hell weekend yeah. ahead of you. And you're not entirely sure in what way exactly, but based on the camp's reputation, you're hoping it will be worthwhile at the very least. Oh, I just remembered something very important that the Valerie's also taking. That is a makeup kit, but like travel makeup kit with a little mirror and battery powered lights. Oh, yes, of course. Not, she's not going to like put on, you know, a whole bunch of foundation when they're like out in the woods, but like she's not going to not be able to to put on eyeshadow and that would be ridiculous. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's an idol camp after all. You have to look your best. Mm -hmm. Despite whatever like sweaty or mosquito filled conditions there are out there. Yes. With that, I think we are going to spirit away to the bus trip. I think everybody somehow manages to drag themselves out of bed, partly ha helped by your parents, I think, in most cases, because I think your parents would probably take you, those who know that you're uh, a super idol anyway. And I think you would load onto the bus and you would have a nice long trip ahead of you to discuss what's coming up and also to get a sense of who all is coming along with you. Oh. Okay. That's ominous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we doing that thing where we go and try and get the back of the bus really quick? <laughs> yeah. 100%. Oh, yes, 100%. Yes, Lucia absolutely. doesn't even look at any yeah. other seat. <laughs> yeah. We just follow her. This is, it's like one of those things where like people just move aside again for her, and we're all just like, yeah, that's right. Get out of our way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and as, as you do that, unfortunately, it seems you are not quite quick enough, and guess who should already be setting themselves up in the back seats, but some faces you recognize very well. <sighs> Guess who? It's Sagittaria. Ah, oh. oh, gross. Mm. Yes, most of them are transformed, just wearing kind of like day outfits in their transformed identities. Rosette isn't in her Dame Divine form just because, like, that's a lot of hair for a bus seat. And of <laughs> course, um, Lizzie slash Made Marvelous is not a horse, but <laughs> otherwise, it's a mostly familiar crew. Um, and I do say mostly, because there are two people missing from the group. One of them is Cass, maybe for understandable reasons. And the other is Diana. Hmm. Hmm. And there is also one other person here who you haven't met yet. It's a skinny brunette white guy who you can only assume is the Cameron that Cass mentioned the last time you talked to her about Sagittaria. And he just looks like kind of weedy and obnoxious he's got a very kind of like justin bieber-esque vibe like kind of oh. to an insecure degree <laughs> like this kid maybe did not have a good idea of what his idol persona should be so he picked one that he already vaguely looked like and ripped it off um and he's just settling himself down kind of in between tyra and rosette uh, <laughs> who looks a little vaguely uncomfortable with him but there he is and there tyra is uh, already smiling up very smugly at you as you approach Lucia does not bat an eye um, at any of this. She has her hands on her hips and is staring down at... I mean, Tyra radiates head girl in charge energy. Um, so I think she's just stand... Because she's sitting, she can, for once, stare someone down. And she is staring down Tyra <laughs> as hard as she can. <laughs> and she meets your gaze with not a flinch to be seen and says, oh... I'm sorry. These seats are taken. And here I thought that you were just warming them up for us. Move. Oh, and why would I do that? I think we're quite comfortable here. Yeah, back off, dweebs, says Cameron. Our group is, like, prepared and shit. We own these seats. And again, Rosette looks very vaguely uncomfortable as, as he says that, but she nods along with the two of them, like, yeah, go, go away. <sighs> Lucia, I think we can... There are the seats. We don't need to take the back ones. It's a status symbol, Jaden. Oh, come on, take a seat. Let them have this. They really need a win. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna need their rest uh, before, we get to, before we get to camp and whoop them again. You get Tyra raising an eyebrow at that, but otherwise looks pretty unfazed. Cameron, a little less good at hiding back a look of annoyance there. Uh, Rosette, oh... <laughs> Maybe trying to hide back a little bit of a giggle. <laughs> Otherwise, trying to <laughs> trying to keep staring you down. Yeah. 
Just, uh, make sure you don't cheat. Wouldn't dream of it, honey, she says with, like, this shark tooth smile. Uh, I do a thing where I, like, very dramatically turn around so that my hair ponytail whips and marches to the front of the bus. Um, Lucia is stomping after her, so her buns are kind of, like, bouncing mm-hmm. as she goes, her little space <laughs> buns. You hear other members of Sagittaria giggling behind you as you go. Jaden just, like, gives them a really cheerful wave, like, bye, and just goes and follows everyone else. <laughs> I wink. Uh, Tyra winks back, and you see uh, Cameron look confused when Jaden waves, because he hasn't seen Jaden do that before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so you all you all get settled down. Uh, Sagittaria seems to be the only other group that you recognize here. The rest of the bus is filled to the brim with other idols around your age group. Some younger, some slightly older, but all of them look um, very raring and ready to go. I'm somebody so wake tired. me up. When, somebody wake me up when we get to camp. And Lucia's going to stretch out on <laughs> now just two seats and pass out. <laughs> And considering this bus is filled to capacity, I think that means um, somebody's going to have to uh, shuffle in underneath Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't do that. I just like knock her feet out of the way and sit down yeah. <laughs> and put my sunglasses down. Yeah, <laughs> and lean back so I can nap the way there. Since it's Angie, I let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've already been seen napping together on buses before. Yeah. Valerie is too tired to actually, like, fight anyone. She just finds finds a seat and sits down and immediately falls back asleep. Yeah, Jaden's going to do the exact same. Queen Bee tries to sit next to Karen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to describe Karen being here. <laughs> so, yes, so Karen is with you today as well. Uh, notably, she has been hanging near the back of the group um, and not, like, as far away from Queen Bee as she can get, but, like, trying not to be next to her, but uh, she can't avoid it when uh, Queen Bee does sit down next to her. She says, Oh, uh, oh, hi. Um, oh, hi, I Kevin. guess we'll... Hi, um, I guess we'll just settle in for the trip then, huh? Oh, yeah. By the way, you know the idol scene better than anyone. Have you heard anything about uh, Kent Grandstar? You got the inside scoop? Oh, yeah, um, of course. Um, it's been around for... The last few years, a lot of the details about what goes on there aren't publicized because they like to um, keep as many cards close to their chest as possible, as much as you can when you're like a weekend camp or whatever anyway. Um, But enough people have given enough positive feedback and enough idols who have gone there have performed well enough in SingStar and the like that they seem like they're legitimate at least. That's good, that's good. And, well, I don't know, is there anything else that we, as a group, should be aware of? And she takes a long pause there. I I mean, they're probably... I mean, there's there's a lot that could... I, but I, I, don't, I don't really know, because I... Um... It's gonna be a long ride, isn't it? And as she speaks, you see her eyes getting heavier, and she yawns as she turns a bit towards the window and, and leans on it like she's going to take a nap. Hm. Huh. Don't worry. Take your time. I'm sure something will come to mind. Oh, there's, this, there's a very slight twinge you can see in her as she falls asleep against the window of the bus. I settle to sleep, and I do it in a kind of a rough way, giving like a bump on the shoulder to Karen. Aww. She, does, she doesn't react to that. Alright, so, yeah, I think you're all you're all gonna settle in for this, this bus ride. It's a long bus ride. Like I said, it's gonna be about an hour and a half riding out into the mountains, uh, so there's no need to cover that in detail. So when you finally get there, it's around about 7am. You ride up to, there's a clearing of, like, a parking lot nearby the lake area. Um, and out in the distance, you can see uh, the forest beyond there. And as you as you step off the buses, you can also see there's like a picnic table type area set up where there's also like a makeshift kind of like 
presentation platform. Nothing too fancy, like just some, like a simple wooden stage, basically. And a big banner that says, Welcome Campers, adorned with a lot of like gold stars. It's a nice silken banner. This is very <laughs> nice as something like that looks. Oh, I've never been to a camp here before. Are all of them like this? No, not usually. I raise my sunglasses up over my head and look up and shrug and be like, okay, let's go. Yeah, you seem to be like, uh, there's a bunch of also adult instructors and staff members who have come on another bus behind you and they're starting to unload now as well. And they're starting to herd people over towards the picnic table areas. Um, and they are starting to get uh, breakfast set up for everybody. And it looks like it's just mm -hmm. going to be something simple, like basically like toast and bacon and, and whatnot, that sort of thing. Uh, and a little bit of orange juice. The whole like scrambled egg buffet thing where they have scrambled eggs in one and hash browns yeah. in another <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically something like that. Something that's easy to, to port around to. Mm -hmm. That whole vibe. I think as they're, as they're walking up, uh, Valerie says, yeah, good too. Sober camps before, but nothing like this. I'm glad this is my first, I guess. Probably doesn't get better. No, you're for sure getting spoiled the first time around. And um, Lucia is just like loading her plate up. Just absolutely <laughs> anything <laughs> and everything. So much hash brown. Like so many. Hash browns? A lot of hash mm -hmm. brown? Yes. Whatever. <laughs> yes to both. Oh, hash brown eye. Um, the plural <laughs> for hash brown is hash brown eye. <laughs> don't, oh, I really oh, hope that's not. You. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, but Jaden's doing the exact same. He's absolutely piling up his plate as well. A ton of scrambled eggs. Yeah, and a lot of the staff are encouraging people to eat as much as they feel comfortable eating because it's going to be a long day ahead of you, and you want to have as much like fuel in you as you can. Yeah, I'm totally loading up too. Like I just see um, Lucia doing it, and then I'm just like, oh. Now no one's gonna get mad at me for doing it. <laughs> and then... <laughs> oh yeah, loading up on eggs and toast. We gotta work together, this is uh... <laughs> yeah. And as you're as you're sitting down at the picnic tables, by the way, uh, the way like the, the way the, the forest out uh, in the distance looks, there's kind of a dip in the landscape ahead of you so that you can see kind of further off into the distance toward the mountains. Uh, and you can see in the distance, built into the side of the mountain, like quite far away, but you can still tell what it is. It's a very cozy looking lodge style hotel uh, with a like a kind of like wood cabin look to it. And its lights look very warm and inviting even from this far away. So that's where we're staying, right? Eventually, right? We have to sleep outside first. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're sleeping outside the first night and then... Oh yeah, I can't wait. Lunch time. Yeah, it's quite a distance. Like, there's a whole, like, valley of forest in between you and this lodge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but can you... Can, just, just breathe in. Can you feel the clean air? Lucia is going to look... Just look so hard and so confused at Queen Bee. Because from everything she knows th about Queen Bee, which granted is not a lot... This does not seem like her jam. She is <laughs> shocked that fashion icon diva extraordinaire Queen Bee is like into this cottage core camp vibe. Weird. <laughs> uh, just just wait for tonight. You have no idea how good the stars look. I mean, I've seen the stars. It's going to be nice. This is my first camp time camping here, but back in the UK, I've camped quite a bit. Um, the stars are beautiful. I think that's probably the part I'm looking forward to the most. I just want s'mores. That's the only good part of it, sitting by the campfire. I make really good s'mores. Aren't you basically a campfire? Like, couldn't yeah. you just... Oh. Okay. Okay, maybe you are useful. Wait, what? <laughs> thank, thank you? <laughs> You're ve ve very useful, very important part of this group, Jaden. No, Jaden's important. I just like giving him a hard time. Oh, okay. I was about to say that seemed a little mean, Lucia. <clears throat> Lucia's face like twists up. I don't. I don't get it. She said I'm useful. Lucia's face twists up, and she looks at Jaden, and she's like, "I'm sorry." <sighs> I'm too tired to process sarcasm. I, I'm confused. Didn't didn't you say I was useful? I isn't that a nice thing? Yes. 
Don't ever change. You're perfect. Don't ever change. Don't ever change. Uh, thank you. I won't. Anyway, um, let's find a place to sit. We have to discuss strategy. <laughs> Yes. yes, and again, okay. it looks like Sagittarius is already ahead of you and has snagged like the closest table to like the front of wherever the, of this like stage that's in front of the tables. Do not care. And how could they do that? They're the last ones off the bus. <laughs> See, cheaters. Do one of them does one of them teleport? It has to be cheaters. something like that. No, no, they're just very organized and they they plowed ahead of people once oh. they got off. <laughs> or maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe I okay. should take that back. <laughs> They're, they're no, they definitely. No, no, convinced I think that they one of them teleported. Maybe it's one of those buses that have two, <laughs> two doors. They're, they're we more did kind of just stand yeah. there and gawk at the sign for a bit before we <laughs> started to go. Yeah. No, and, and from the looks of things, uh, Tyra has probably been to this camp before, and she knows the deal, so she knows mm -hmm. what she's after. Yeah, and they're they're more focused on asserting dominance than than figuring out what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Also, we don't want to sit near them, so let's sit closer to the back. Why would anybody mm -hmm. ever focus on asserting dominance? Haha, <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> anyway, let's go sit over here. I don't get it. <laughs> You're so sweet, Jaden. Never change. Anyway, let's go. Why does everyone keep saying that? I think as as they're walking, um, Valerie's still very tired. We need to make sure they they know we don't care where they are. Oh, Agreed. okay. Indeed. And we need to make sure that we don't care if we're up at the front and the teachers see us. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not suck-ups. You're the cool kids sitting in the back of the outdoor classroom. <laughs> yeah, like, I think we all, a bunch of us have our sunglasses on. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Definitely, 100%. <laughs> Karen pulls a pair of sunglasses out of her cargo short pockets. <laughs> Everyone like looks so cool and like they don't care, and then Jaden's like looking around, so excited right now. He's just so happy to be here. <laughs> I wish we were transformed because Lucia would make a pair of illusionary oh, sunglasses. <laughs> oh, you can be transformed oh, yeah. now if you want. Like you can, you can say you transformed okay. before you left. <laughs> yeah, I, yes. I, I would be transformed for sure. Yeah, actually, I realized yes. that would that would make oh, yeah. a lot of sense for Vivi as well. Since oh, yeah, like a lot. Most of the idols here probably transformed before they left. She's Fair trying enough. to still try and keep her identity semi secret. Yeah. Um yeah. then a big pair of like rose gold reflective sunglasses appear on Jaden's face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> is this you Lucia, did you do this? This is these are my favorite colours. Good. At least you know, taste. Pink's a great colour. It looks really good on you. And she keeps walking. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so as you sit and you eat your breakfast at the at the picnic tables, uh, you start to see some more of the adult staff moving around to different groups, and you can tell like a lot of these people are like the camp instructors who have been hired to lead various groups, like counselors, I guess they would be. And you see one person approach you. They are a very, very short woman, like probably even shorter than Ms. Doyle, like under five feet. <laughs> um, so short, stocky frame. They look very encouraging and cheerful, and they are wearing casual, practical clothing. Like a, they're wearing a like a flannel shirt and a insulated vest, jeans, uh, good climbing shoes. They've got a walking stick and a big backpack, and uh, they've got a big, like thick pair of glasses and a smile on their face. And they reach out to extend a hand to shake and say, "Hey, uh, ry rhythmics, right? Yeah." Yeah, that's us. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, my name's my name's Connie. Uh, idol name Connie Shuffle. Uh, she they pronouns. Uh, and it's nice to meet you. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be your guide for this weekend. Hi, Connie. Hi, Connie. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Yes, Hi. I'm Jada. So, Hi. He him pronouns. Karen, she her pronouns. And Karen looks like still like a little like <laughs> thrown from earlier. Uh, uh, violence, Violet. You can call me Vivi. Uh, she her. Trixie, she, her. Queen Bee, she, her. Ah, oh, nice to meet you all. And and uh, she shakes your hands all in turn um, and uh, sits down with uh, their own like big pile of uh, eggs and bacon um, and says, 
Uh, so, um, I've I've heard a lot about you uh, leading up to uh, leading up to this. Uh, I I understand you had a big show recently. I, I wanted to I wanted to do my research and make sure that I, I knew who I was who I was guiding. Um, <laughs> and uh, I I'm just I'm very excited. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna have a great weekend together. Yeah, that's great. Um, did you see like a bunch of cool videos about like from our performance and stuff? Yeah. No, you you all look like you're you're on a great road to some great uh, uses of your your powers and and your talents already. I'm I I think I'm I'm I've got a good feeling. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna do very well here at Grand Star. Good, I I think so too. I think we're we're all here with a goal to step up our game to the next level. Mm, that's that's what I like to hear. Uh, and they they raise their their fists like oh. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be, like, getting pumped to go. I love them. I love them with all my heart. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, is there also any way I can help as well? Like if you're short on, on staff or just anything really? Oh, no, I, I don't think you have to worry too much about that. Uh, we're going to keep mainly uh, just to smaller groups for a lot of this. Um, so it'll it'll mainly just be, be y'all and me for, for a lot of it. Uh, mainly what you want to do is uh, is stick together as best you can. It's, it's a big... It's a big environment that they got planned for this year, so you want to make sure that nobody gets lost. Although, uh, we do want to make sure, and she reaches into her backpack, um, and pulls out a, a little container, like a, like a case, uh, for electronics, and opens it up to reveal, uh, several of those, like, um, anti-powers, uh, bracelets, similar to the ones that you saw on the guards at the Crimson Signal building. Uh, who made those? Oh, I'm I'm not sure. I, I don't know too much about the the gadgets that they they give to people here, but I I know that they're supposed to be able to help you defend yourselves against any other uh, any other super idle powers or or environmental effects out there. Uh, and also they mm-hmm. they're built in with the GPS tracker and a distress beacon and uh, just anything else that will help you uh, if you're in a tight spot there. I'm going to pick one up and I'm going to just, uh, or I'll ask if it's okay. I'll just be like, can I? Oh yeah, no, they're all for you. Take one. Everybody take one. Okay. And I'm going to immediately okay. look around for like a brand name. <laughs> <laughs> and well, paranoid. Yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, they, they are indeed manufactured by Crips and Signal. They're everywhere. Everywhere. And Jaden sorry. puts his on immediately. It's what a, oh my god. <laughs> y- y'all seem very concerned about brand what? names. I, 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 are you like brand loyal? To, were you hoping for, for like a Radio Shack or something? Yeah, yeah. We're actually huge Radio Shack fans. Her, we're trying and, to get sponsored uh, by Radio Shack. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's right. We, yeah, we, we're just, you know. Want to make sure these are these are safe? And oh, don't you worry. From what I from what I understand, uh, Grand Star accepts nothing but nothing but the best, nothing but the the most safe and well tested stuff for everything that goes into for everything that goes into their camps every year. Oh, that's great. Um, do they uh, publish the results of those tests anywhere where the students can see? I'm not sure, but I'm I'm sure. Uh, I guess the manufacturer's page probably would. Um, <laughs> I know I know I could probably ask uh, my supervisors where y- y'all could get that information. Oh, that'd be that'd be wonderful. Yeah, sure. So the 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 camp didn't actually try these out or anything. Oh well, uh, I don't I don't know the the specifics of that myself there. Um, but I I know that. Pretty much everything else in the camp has been tested extensively, so I don't see why why your standard uh, safety equipment wouldn't be as well. Okay, thanks. Sorry, just really cautious, that's all. Um, my mom's like a total worry for it, you know, so oh, I yeah, have say to no more, say everything. no more. Yeah. yeah, no, that absolutely, you should be absolutely worried about your safety on, a, on any camping trip uh, in all respects, because, like, even things that don't seem like they, they would be dangerous absolutely can be, so you're right to be questioning anything that makes you feel in any way kind of twitchy or weird or unsafe. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Th- thank you. Yeah, well, you, you'll let me know if you want me to talk to anybody, but uh, for what it's worth, I think these are I think these are fine, but you just let me know if you want me to go ask somebody. And uh, every team has these specific ones? Oh, from yeah. From Pins and Signal? Oh, yeah. There's no Radio the- Shack ones? Oh yeah, no, they're they're a big sponsor this year. They they very graciously stepped up to to provide a bunch of the bunch of the technology for this year. <sighs> okay, sounds sounds good. Thanks. Of course everywhere. they did. <laughs> everywhere. I think it's just something we're gonna have to accept and deal with. Yeah. Uh, Vivi puts puts hers on and then um, just like makes sure that she can still use her powers a little bit, just like. Oh yeah, you can use your yeah. own powers okay. just fine using these. These are more for like blocking outside mm-hmm. powers from hitting you. Oh yeah, no, oh. I understood that. That's that's what the the stated intent was, but I was just being paranoid. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, from from what you can tell, there's no like you don't feel any blocking of your powers, and if you're like looking for like that anything similar to like what you felt from like the stage with vaporwave, you don't feel like any more tired than you were before. Anyway. <laughs> I'm like staring at Vivi. 
just mm. waiting for like her go ahead, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this 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 is fine. I, uh, th- thank you, thank you, Connie. This is uh, great. Good to know that our our safety is being provided so thoroughly. Oh yeah, no no worries at all. It's, it's one of the things that that Grand Star prides itself on. So I, I'm glad to be of service. And I like begrudgingly put mine on. Just really wish it was Radio Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Does Radio Shack still exist in this Riley's universe? <laughs> I, no, it doesn't. It, no, that's why. Yeah, that's why I jumped I on said, it. I said that specifically be, to make her sound out of her touch. <laughs> we just went with it. Anyway, yeah. No, so they they eat the rest of their breakfast with you, and as the the meal goes on, you see that there's people setting up some things on the wooden stage, like a couple like simple amps and speakers and whatnot, and it looks like towards the end of your meal. People are getting ready to uh, make some kind of presentation there. And if any of you uh, read the brochure in detail, you may have noticed uh, Mm -hmm. that part of the agenda says that uh, the orientation will feature a special performance by this year's special guests, Maze, spelt M4ZE. And they are, you would know who this is. They are a girl group quartet. Uh, they're actually one of the most famous girl groups in Cadence. Like they're they're very like <laughs> they're like the Black Pink of Cadence, basically. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Very I was nice. like a Me quartet, too. Black <laughs> Pink. Let's go. Yes. Maze in your area. Very very nice. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so certainly as uh, the rest of this presentation starts to get set up, you see that. Uh, five people come out onto the stage. Four of them are indeed the the members of Maze, led by their uh, their popular uh, front woman Talia. Uh, but there's also a fifth person who is joining them uh, and setting up at a makeshift kind of like DJ table at the the side of the stage. She's a black woman with long silvery braided hair. She's wearing a Tron-like sil- a sleeveless jumpsuit with glowing neon accents uh, and a teal cyberpunk visor across her eyes. And you would also know who this is. Uh, this is Prophetess. She is a well-known EDM producer and DJ who is famous for her dream jams, which are performances that take place entirely in vivid dream spaces. Ooh, that is cool. Oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> Lucia is breaking down on a molecular level. She's trying so hard to keep her cool, but like, these are two... Th- these are all amazing artists, so she's losing it. <laughs> yeah, like, these are some of the most, like, actually famous celebrities you've met so far, like, Bomb Bomb Brothers level. Mm-hmm. No way. Vivi is definitely also starstruck, but pr- maybe doing better at not looking like it so much. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, thankfully Lucia has those big sunglasses on, but she's basically, <laughs> yeah, like, <true>. vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> I love these, because Jaden's not hiding at all. He's like, no yeah. way. No, Maze. I didn't I didn't read that part of the brochure. Maze is here? Lucia, are you seeing this? Maze is here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why are you freaking out? Maze is, Maze I... is here. Uh, Car- Bro, Karen can't help it either. Uh, she looks like she's bouncing in her seat a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm... God, I know every single one of their songs. I'm going to lose it. I know every single one of their songs. Maybe we will get to meet them. God. And no you're way, probably okay. all regretting sitting near the back of the seating area <laughs> <No>. now. <laughs> Oh no, I forgot about that. <laughs> we yeah. have to go, we have to go, we have to go. Like, Lucy is grabbing Jaden's arm because like she knows he's down, she's grabbing Karen with another, and she's gonna do that like aggressive concert shuffle man. Oh, I miss oh, concerts. And, and anyway. Connie but- reaches up for you and grabs the back of your shirt and they they plop you back down in your seat. Oh mm-hmm. no, no, sit, 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 sit. They're just getting their performance started. It'd be rude to like get up like just as you're getting going. <laughs> she sits. Uh, yeah, I, I I saw that they're going to be playing. I was, I'm, I'm really excited to see them live. You don't sound excited. Okay, take notes, everyone. Please, I have been following Maze for so long. I know every single one of their dances. You got it. And like Lucia whips yeah. out her phone. Yeah, and you get a chance to, to prove this in short order, because after they give their introduction up on the stage and welcome everybody to Camp Grandstar... Talia in particular is leading this and saying like, 
Thank you all so much for coming. It's, it's such a great opportunity to see so many great young idols out here. This is our first year participating in Grand Star, and I th we've got something really special lined up for you this year. I'm, I'm really excited to show you what we have in store. I think this is, this is going to be literally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all of you. Uh, and uh, with that, Prophetess nods and uh, starts up a custom collaboration beat between their two groups. Like, clearly it's a mashup of, like, one of Maze's songs and one of Prophetess's songs, and it, like, absolutely rules. <laughs> wow. And Maze starts up a very sharp, very polished dance routine. Every single one of their moves is perfect as expected, full of power and oomph, and, like, <laughs> even from far away, you feel like their kicks are gonna, like, hit you in the face. They're so strong. Maze leaning forward and just staring. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Same. Karen has scrambled into her, like, cargo short pockets to pull out some light sticks. <laughs> v Vivi's just, just totally wrapped in attention. I think Jaden has, like, got uh, his, like, notepad out and he's, like, writing down, scribbling down, like, trying to get a beat of the song that's being played down on paper somehow. It makes no sense to anyone else, but to him, he understands it. <laughs> You're, like, basically writing in Morse code. Like, it's like, okay, there's a yeah. dash for this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I think Vivi's, like, she's not writing anything down, but she's totally focused and, like, moving her mouth, just, like, silently describing each of their moves as they go. Um, Lucia definitely had her phone, but now her hands are just, like, in her lap as she's watching, and she, I think she's, like, mouthing the words um because she knows every word and i think she's kind of like grooving trying so hard not to do like mirror their movements um i do think one of her hands is moving a little bit to like follow like the point moves that they do but uh yeah no she's she's enraptured oh my goodness yeah and their their performance goes on they do a couple of songs uh they do after the remix song they do uh one of their own maze songs and then the, they do a Prophetess song and they, they do a custom dance to her song. And Prophetess makes a few like flourishes of her own at the at the DJ table, uh, like arm movements and like flashing neon lights from her visor and her outfit. And as the performance starts to wrap up, Talia brings it in for the final pose. And then as they finish, she extends a hand out to one side and says, ah, Thank you so much again, everybody. But that was definitely not our showstopper for today. For that, we are going to need a little assistance from one of our very good friends, Conduit. Let's hear it for Conduit, everybody. And again, this is a very famous dance idol who Bane Raven and Queen Bee would absolutely know who he is. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, is my hair okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Okay, that's great. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and he comes out on stage. He is a very like tall and well built Greek man with long brown hair tied back in a low ponytail. He's wearing a skin tight uh, black top with a plunging V neck edged in blue and green, and these flowing pants that accent the movements of his legs as he walks and moves. And he moves into the center of the stage with Talia. Uh, the other members of Maze and Prophetess kind of move off to the side so that they can be in the center of the stage. And he looks out to the to all of you and, and again says, Thank you all for coming to Camp Grand Star this year. It is always one of my great pleasures to see the next generation of young idols rising up year after year. And being a part of making them the best they can be is something that I take a lot of pride in. This year, Maze and Prophetess and I have all got something really epic for all of you and like Talia said this is this is going to be a once in a lifetime thing this this is going to take something from all of us to put together and conduit takes Talia's hand they nod to each other respectfully and prophetess starts up the music and the two of them begin a very polished tango across the stage their movements flow together effortlessly, like almost like they psychically know what each other's going to do next, even though you know that's not what their powers are. 
And again, they make a lot of sweeping arm gestures. They especially gesture a lot towards the mountain horizon together, all while keeping contact between their hands. And they use some acrobatic type moves to twist and turn while maintaining that physical touch between their hands. And as the two of them dance, you start to remember why Conduit is called Conduit. Uh, Conduit doesn't have a very visible power, not one that that would manifest on a stage necessarily by himself, Um, but he is one of the most powerful power enhancers in the super idol world. And you start to put together the reason that Maze is called Maze is their shows are very like heavy on environmental modification. Like, some of them can control plants, uh, another can control water, another can control light, and Talia herself can manifest mazes out of the environment. And if Conduit can amplify mazes' abilities, you start to realize you are about to see something spectacular. So as Talia and Conduit dance together, you start to hear a rumbling in the distance. And on the horizon, where you see the light of Grand Star Lodge, you start to see something that is eclipsing that light. As the sun is just starting to rise over the peak of the Black Tusk, there is just enough light for you to see that the lodge is being enclosed within what looks like a large sphere which seems to be made of an amalgam of materials from the lodge itself and of plants and earth from the forest surrounding it. And as this sphere completes itself, another starts to form around it, this time even more full of rocks and plants and trees and earth. And another sphere forms after that, and another after that, each successive layer more massive and impressive than the last. This continues until, at last, the sphere could be more accurately described as a small planetoid floating over almost the entire forest ahead of you. The outside of this massive sphere has reached very close to where your group sits now. And from the underside, a section of rounded earth and greenery begins to part. Somehow, light seems to penetrate into and through this space revealing a pathway into what appears to be a massive forest labyrinth within. And from the bottom of that pathway, there begins to grow a natural ramp made out of rock, roots, and vines, all building their way down to eventually rest in front of the picnic area. You all are being invited inside. Holy shit. No way. Okay. Oh boy. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have to figure out how to do that without a conduit. Okay. Goodness. Doing it kind of just like writes this down like Who's a maze? make a maze out <laughs> of uh us. <laughs> maybe maybe you should transform first. Oh yeah, Jaden, you should transform. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I'm going to transform. <sighs> yeah, you definitely He's have gonna, enough time to transform, transform while this massive planetoid is forming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we and saw it going on and we were like, uh, mm-hmm. Jada. <laughs> I, I'm, going to, I'm going to adjust my outfit. So, like, I was wearing shorts before and a plaid shirt. It's, like, jeans now and, like, really good, like, boots, except they're bright pink. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that that's basically it. It was just like, I just wanted to make sure I was wearing pants when I was going into this earth place. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Set of shorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to transform. Um, I think my look is going to be um, plain, like, burnt shirt underneath that he's wearing, like, a pink top to match the glasses that Lucia gave him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a pair of, like, just a pair of simple blue um, slim fit jeans and, like, trainers. Um, that are, not trainers, um, hiking boots. He's got hiking mm-hmm. boots on mm-hmm. right now because he's 
we're probably going to need them. And uh, you know what? A, a bracelet, which is also pink to match the sunglasses. Very good. Oh my god, I love this look so much. <laughs> um, Aaron, would and- Maze have an associated color? Um, or do all the members have different colors? <laughs> I think they probably would have, like, I guess if this makes sense, like, earthy but saturated colors. So, like, green, mm. but a very vibrant green and blue um, and maybe, like, a very rich red brown. Uh, and there's four of them. Mm-hmm. What's another one? Um, maybe like, like an ochre, like a like a warm, earthy yellow. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so Lucia's gonna... She's still transformed, so she is Trixie. Um, but yeah, so Trixie's now wearing these, like, big overalls with boots on. And then the shirt underneath her overalls is the color of the wrapper in Maze. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, oh which I'm one would the wrapper um... be? Oh, now I gotta look at my list. Oh. <laughs> Supplies me. Oh, yeah, if there um... is a wrapper, sorry, I took the... I oh, took yeah, the no shirt. Sure. joke way too seriously. <laughs> I was like, there's got to be one. Queen B is uh, keeping the full getup, heels included, but just adding uh, some uh, climbing gloves. And then I'm going to try and summon every bee in the area. Oh my god. Oh my god. To, to, um, Jaden flinches. To, to where? And the flinches very visibly when it happens. Like to behind you or like? Yeah, just uh, have them ready for when, he, when it's time to go in. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'm going to ask you to unleash your powers because that's a large amount of bees. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no. I just, I feel like we have to be, it's go time once we get into that mm-hmm. maze, mm-hmm. so. I mean, you know, two's a crowd, but three's a company, or never mind, that pun's not going to work. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. yeah, you can see around you other idols at the tables are, like, transforming as well. The ones mm-hmm. who hadn't transformed already, clearly they're, like, new this year, like you. Sagittaria, of course, were already transformed and already in their um, hiking gear from the start because uh, Tyra told them what to expect. <laughs> oh, nice. Very nice. So Queen Bee got an 11 on her Unleash Your Powers. So you you get this massive like wave of bees behind you. Um, and that alarms like some of the like campground staff who, th- who at first think it's like a swarm headed for the, the campers but when they see it's basically just a wall that stops directly behind you uh, they relax and realize oh it's it's an idle power thing and it's under control it's fine see this is this is the real reason that we had to sit at the at the back at the edge of all the seating <laughs> <laughs> yes but also like what a power move like what a way to assert dominance like everybody's getting ready and all of a sudden <laughs> you're just a yes. swarm of bees that's yeah. around us. and i think there's hey. probably like again like there's idols transforming and there's probably other idols who are like flexing their own powers as well in a similar fashion like you can see like bursts of flame and like uh and rainbows and light and sh- shadow and like just a whole bunch of like effects burst off as people like realize oh we're we're getting ourselves hyped up with bursts of power right now seeing uh b in her gloves um angie also manifests gloves on herself and just does that thing where she <laughs> cracks her knuckles a little bit vivi is just wearing the same the same outfit she just you know summons summons her sword and is ready to go but is not you know, if you can't look uh, Gothic Lolita while you're running through a uh, camp maze, then when can you? Then, like, what's the point? <laughs> or silly pie. Yes. Is she at least wearing some some stylish boots with good treads? <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think she's wearing like high heeled boots now. <sighs> They're not the most practical. They are slightly more practical. Gothic Lolita, but make it safari. Yeah. Gothic Lolita, yes. but make it like a crocodile hunter. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, she she probably like also summons like a wide brimmed hat to uh, to keep to keep the sun off of her. In addition to the sunglasses. Oh, yeah, completing your just... like superhero avoiding the paparazzi look. Yes. So good. <laughs> it's like one of those safari hats, but it, the ribbon is still like purple and frilly with like black lace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. And then we strut in slow motion. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs>
You can't literally go yet because there's there uh, some of the camp staff uh, move to the front at this point, uh, and they start to explain like various like safety procedures. Um, you see that people are splitting off into their groups with their various instructors and getting uh, organized. They explain that all the instructors who are heading up uh, groups going into the labyrinth have basic first aid training and field medicine training. Um, also that there are uh, medical staff and nurses standing by at the lodge um, and that there are uh, other super idle staff members around who have various fast travel abilities like teleportation and portaling and enhanced speed who can rush into the labyrinth at a moment's notice and pull someone out if they're like seriously in distress and take them straight to the lodge whenever they need to. And they also explain again about the about your wristbands that they are used for blocking like unexpected bursts of power or anything that is in the labyrinth itself that might be uh, too much of uh, too much of a danger, and that they can track you and you can send out a distress beacon to again summon someone to come pick you up and take you to the lodge if you really need it. But that otherwise, if you're not in distress, your your goal here is. Well, first, you're going to have to head into the labyrinth, but once you're in there, your goal is to make it to the lodge without needing a rescue, and the first ones who get there, the earlier you get there, one, you'll get first pick of food from the buffet, and two, you will get extra time to work with Conduit and Prophetess, who are the premier trainers at this camp this weekend. Conduit, of course, will help you amplify your powers and get you used to using them at a higher level. And Prophetess is a skilled and powerful super idol in her own right, and will be able to use her own powers to help provide a safe environment for you to work in. So basically, the more time you have to work with them, the better. Uh, you're also told a few more logistics things about rest and meal breaks. Basically, whenever rest breaks are announced, everyone has to either stop where they are or in the nearest safe area. All active obstacles will be disabled during that time, and you must take your rest break. If you break off from your group instructor, or strike out on your own, or forge ahead when you're not supposed to, you will be penalized and potentially removed from the campgrounds. But other than that, you just do what you can to get there first, and hopefully reap the rewards. Okay, so we, we need to win. We need to we, win, yes. right? We yes, need to win. We're we winning. Win. Yeah, oh. we're winning. We're going. Absolutely. Yeah. I will also add that if it doesn't look like we're going to win, let's make sure that Sagittaria doesn't win. I like the way you think. Oh, you you know I'm on that. Yeah, Vivi is nodding. Mm, uh, hopefully I should be okay in there. I know I'm not the most physically fit, but I think I can keep up as long as we pace ourselves. Okay. Oh, good. You coming too? Uh, yeah, I, I do want some of the free buffet too and she shuffles a bit awkwardly as she puts her light sticks back in her pockets oh don't you worry there Karen you'll be fine with me and all, all your good buddies I'm sure if anything goes wrong I, I can use my power I have the power to shuffle parts of my environment to different physical spaces so if we if you get in a tight spot then we'll get you back to the lodge you're safe and sound now there don't, don't you worry that is an amazing power but don't worry about Karen she can handle herself I put the, my hand around Karen's shoulders and just pull her closer. Uh, B? I mean, it's like you told me. Danger is part of the game, right? Yeah, Karen's looking quite uncomfortable. She is still trying to put a smile on as B puts an arm around her, but like you, you can tell this is not like totally great for her right now. It's good that we have those safety precautions in place. Thank you, B. Yeah. Um, uh, we should go. Let's, uh, uh, B, why don't you, you, uh, step away so we can get started? Okay, um, let's go, let's win, and if we don't win, stop Sagittaria. Let's go! And then I put my hand in the middle so we can all do our cheer. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Vivi immediately yeah, puts her hand in as well. Hand in. hand in. Karen stares off into space for a few moments as you're all putting your hands in. Karen. <laughs> oh, right. And she puts her hand in. Go Rhythmic! 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 Woo! 
We we need to get we need to is it, we still gonna be like on three because I'm never ready I'm never sure when we're gonna say rhythmic. You're right. You're right. We'll work on it. Right now we need to okay. get to the entrance. But you're right. Um, we'll write that down. Work on chant. <laughs> <laughs> so much for listening to Super Idols RPG and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at Author X. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at Queen BE 15160871. Lucia slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Live in a Day. GMing, editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff and is under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Humans Win and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com and Freesound.org. Thank you all for listening. Stay well. And goodbye until next time. Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.